Hello guys, welcome to today's show. My name is Nachos and you're on GFL TV, the home of football. So if today is the first time we to see our program, we're here to bring you the latest Arsenal news updates as they drop all over the world. So for now, most out today's news. A master run defeat Bodo glimpse 1 0 in a very, very difficult match. If you watch that match, you will notice that Arsenal struggle for that Bodo Glint artificial pitch, that their plastic pitch. The way they play for the match for the first half, I watch as our, our boys did play. Though Bodo Glint creates some kind of chances that they first give us some kind of early attacks and try to score us, but with the defensive partnership of Rob Holding and William Saliba and Matt Stone, we got them back. And don't forget that we use a Ben White and Kerry Anton. We use a very strong back line. We can help us shield the keeper from all attacks from Bodo Glint. Bodo Glint, they already understand the pitch. So we take us some time to get used to the pitch, to get used to how we take the play. So Aston score go from Bukayo Saka, and that's just a lucky goal. About wipe shots, then it's even deflect on somebody, hit a ricochet for a face, can enter the back of the net. 1-0, that one now will come home and our tactics for that match we're going to play some kind of short short passes, short short passes but we're going to get many many one on one like in short their players they be shit I did tell about Sato yesterday and I say but we're going to play as they be shit back because look at the chances upon chances upon chances we then create, we then for you to punish Arsenal but they could not utilize the chance I person go see post there, the white shots go this side see that one a player I don't know where they from farmers league I'll be a fisherman, they all bring them assemble them, assemble them, they play but lo and behold Arsenal try very if you want the second one, I'm going to say they bring in Shaka, they bring in Pate they bring in Martinez like we almost use our entire squad to get for that match because it was very very important and when you look at the history of that Bodo Blitz for that their plastic pitch, they get advantage over anybody when they play there. They don't win their 14 matches straight. Their last 14 games for that place in European competition, they won all of them. I remember seeing them beat uh, Roma for UEFA Europa Conference League 6-1 to show you how good they are against European opposition. For that their plastic pitch, because UAE they used to grass pitch, you get. You could find them very very difficult. To go play for that place, even though Miguel Arteta say you know the reason I say you no know, go count anything. But Ogama goes talk yesterday say forget all those things, I just mind games. He goes to go Valley Contest and say yeah, it's going to affect us. Say that place for something you know they train on, it go Valley affects you, but you just thank our God say we end up 1 0. As they like this now, we're not the top of the group. PSV beat Zurich, I think 5 0 or 5 4, I can't remember, but they score 5 sha. So now we and them, they, I think, 9 uh, 12 points. Then we did like seven points or thereabouts. Because initially we did nine, they did four four. We get, okay, I think I think nine seven or thereabouts. So as it stands now, if we just beat PSV for our next game, at low. So away from that, so for the media sessions, they're gonna interview Gary Neville for the Pondy duty. They're gonna ask him, say, high index C Arsenal, the way they play, and who and who in Phil say will end up for the top four. Shockingly, shockingly. Back on come side, the third say Arsenal will find them difficult to break into the top four. So they forget say Arsenal and then they lead the race now. Say so at the end of the day, they see the likes of Spurs, they see United, they see City, they see Chelsea and Liverpool. Say so Arsenal there for top four now. So you know just want to talk and say maybe they just stay there for now. So if we don't want to talk and say go anger Arsenal fans. But what you know, they say at the end of the season. In no see Arsenal break into the top four. If this is not a, a bad blood or a bias on Arsenal, I don't know what is. You are you are a pundit. You are not Manchester United pundits, you are a football pundit to get. You don't be like me now. If you see me now, nah, my job is focused on solely Arsenal. I can have a bias for Arsenal, that is understandable. You you are a general sports pundit for everybody. You are supposed to be objective, you get. You show your when you're going to show your bias like this, you see a team that is high flying, a team that has played like a uh, 10 games win nine. I mean, overall, all their games they play like 13 or 14 games, they lose one, and you are coming out to say they will not break into the top four. I, I, it's like, I don't feel understand where this man they come from. You're gonna place a Manchester United that are struggling, they place them above Arsenal. Say at the end of the season, Manchester United will finish above Arsenal. So Manchester United will win all their games, Arsenal will lose. You are saying Liverpool is going to come back, they're going to fight back. So Liverpool will win all their games. We are how many points behind? And Liverpool they how many points behind Arsenal? At the moment now, more than 10 points. And if it's Arsenal, we have to lose, they lose, they lose. Liverpool can win, they win. Like, I don't know, I don't understand. 
what thing I think about Baba and the top because it's in the best man. I just be careful with my words. I don't want to talk some kind of way. Go feel you go say ah you are using bad language because I don't understand it. Then away from that, from the media side, they come they interview me at third side. They come they ask him about Max Turner. The way Max Turner take play for the match in delivery. Say how Michael Arteta take see Max Turner delivery. Quite all right. Michael Arteta can't talk. Say Max Turner delivery don't they improve? He did very very well. Though he did better in the second half. I'm not gonna lie. The guy delivery no fit compare him with Ramsdale. But at the same time, he is improving because Ramsdale will not the teacher one or two because you see no every goalkeeper they good with their leg. So Ramsey go down the teacher and one or two and okay like this like this cough the ball like this do like this calculate the wind and everything so I just be very very happy say the guy don't they improve that's all we need yes you may not be the finished goods yet but at least be improving every day in your craft and who knows in the next few months so like some of the talkers they say Ramsey fit to um, turn after the challenge Ramsey for the first position because of what he didn't do against Bodo Blitz. But I disagree with that at all. They are a different castle of fish at all. At the same time, they're going to ask me, because I said, what's it being thoughts on the match? What's it being analysis? So back on to say, Evali, the match is a very tough match now. And when you're coming from the backdrop of the fact, say, Bodo Blitz don't win the, the last 14 European games on this that plastic pitch and we that will be the 15th game and we came here and won uh, we did not dominate but at least we came here to win we won ugly the most important thing was to collect the three points that was why we came here with a very big squad imagine to put party to push shaka to put martinez in saka play the match the only person you got to say miss now maybe give me issues because anybody will be somebody play this match ah uh, you don't say no easy to be asked later enter ah uh, what did they find again only game of i thought so, okay they leave that one making rest but we played almost many many big names to show say this was a very very important encounter because I think I don't talk say so anyone could top the group so that we'll go skip those extra extra games just stop the group and go and wait for them in the round of 16 yes that was our own plan and when you did there you will get easier fixtures ahead and they will pay you with some kind of heavy weights yes, that's the goal and that's our plan so if we just beat PSV as we don't qualify into the next stage, you get nobody will come argue with us with anything. So I think I call the talk. that pitch, I'm not making no lie, the pitch was something else. It really affected us. Like the way the ball they travel so fast. Like we just they, if you watch that short short passes we do because any if you watch eh, we do many many misplaced passes. A lot to get. But at the end of the day, shall thank us we now for those who know they are aware, so Rich James of Chelsea don't get injury. So many many pundits they talk say that Rich James injury. It will help Ben White, it will put Ben White in a better position to get picked for the World Cup. Because when you check him, Ben White they play very, very well as a right back compared to as a centre back. So if the coach will pick him, coach will pick him as a right back, not necessarily as a centre back, even though he can deputize as a centre back, it will be an added advantage. Somebody who's very, very versatile can play centre back and play right back perfectly, he gets. So we never know how long Rich James will be out. And this is a World Cup now, just November now. Anytime November, late November, shall they go start? So we just watch how many months the guy go there out. Just like Luis Diaz now, I said Luis Diaz will miss 10 games. He's just, Luis Diaz, the doctor will come back by January, which means he's going to miss the World Cup through the injury way sustained against Arsenal. So let's just watch it. I just pray me the big Ben White, may go represent England for the World Cup. At the same time, they call the ask and tell say, I feel about the fact say if we beat PSV now, we don't qualify. So but back on to say that one are true. So if we beat them, we will qualify. But before PSV, don't forget say we get leads. So we will first focus on leads. After we don't beat leads, they will come prepare very well against that PSV side because that PSV match, that that Richard do one with the Richard do that time. So I can't be very very happy saying that minutes with the player and PSV a lot of hype don't they on them especially that could be got so this is going to be a perfect audition for Arsenal and Arsenal fans to watch that Cody Gakpo, we will see what is this guy really there about. Is he really as good as people are saying? I mean, because in the play sheet back, I can't the score goals are plenty. Come be like say, him be the rave of the moment. Who could play? Who will play? They will see what he will play against our fullbacks, either against a Kiriatini or a uh, Zinchenko or against a uh, Tomiyasu or a Ben White. We will see what he will do against them. Uh -huh. That I will call the Georgia. That at least we will see Zaha they play against us. We know how dangerous Zaha can be. We will see other players get. We know how good they can be. So we will watch that one. We will see how the match will be. Our Heski will be one of Liverpool legends. Former Liverpool player. Don't come and say call the talk. Say make Liverpool go sign Martinelli. He gets it. Go make sense. Go improve them immensely. Say this guy now raw talent. Say this guy. 
you get pace, you get stamina, you get aggressive, aggressiveness or aggression if you like. And say so this guy they bomb pace per 90 minutes. And don't forget, I see they always like to reel out this stats so that can talk about Marcel and say the guy they run 100 miles per hour from the beginning of the match to the ending. The guy is a sprint star, you get. So let's keep receiving them look for any amount of money where Arsenal wants. But they make sure they sign the guy. And don't forget the Liverpool manager, Jurgen Club. He's a big, big fan of Martinelli. Last year, he talks about Martinelli that the talent of the century, not the decade, talent of the century. But once you are just one thing and say, Arsenal no go sell this guy. It could be in the next five years, it could be in the next seven years, maybe Arsenal will sell him, who knows. But presently, as we did now, he is one of the core players of the team. Very, very influential. And no fish because now Martinelli don't need it as much as influential as a Buka Yusaka. If you watch our ball, they go through both wings. If now last season, majority of the balls went through Saka, but this season, majority is going through Martinelli. And sometimes, even if now the system Martinelli and Saka, if they swap positions, sometimes they will, you know, confuse the opponent. Let them know, let them know. So I'm very, very happy with the way things they go. So for buying Martinelli from Arsenal, no fear happen. Away from that, you get one newspaper for Roma, what they call Roma Gialorosa. So they come and let us know so Roma won't make Douglas Luis their priority for January. They want to make sure they sign him. They need a defensive midfielder. Don't forget to say Mourinho will be one signed by the in the past, but will not give, give them. So now they look so okay. They are going to go for Douglas Luis and their general manager, Thiago Pinto. Now they come and talk, say he don't sanction this deal. So by January, they are going to go for him because Douglas Luis is going to be a cheaper proposition compared to other players because by January, he will be eligible to sign pre contract with many, many clubs. I know, so as it stand now, we don't offer £25 million for the last summer transfer. Uh, Aston Villa no agree, so now they will lose it if people will they come now they go feel get a cheaper offer. Roma will look similar that kind 10 15 million pounds go feel sign the guy. Aston himself no go feel come they come back with a 25 million pound deal. We'll give them a cheaper option. And don't forget say, in the past I've been talking about Denis Zakaria. Now I can't get new information. Somebody corrected me in the comment section say Denis Zakaria no be say Chelsea sign up. Chelsea took him on loan from a Juventus. So if we want sign up because Juventus don't need him, he's seen a surplus to requirements. See, Arsenal will need to contact Juventus to sign up either on loan or to sign up outrightly. You get so now Arsenal, I think the best will be on loan if Chelsea take a contract for January. See, they don't want time again because they never even put them for the bench, not to talk of the match day squad. So the guys have the para. <laughs> see, why they come buy him? They don't say they go with him. But it's just unfortunate for him. Say the coach will buy him, they don't suck him. Before they go even play him, you get unlike Aubameyang. Go say the coach will sign him, they don't suck him. They have to see the play Aubameyang. So if Arsenal want him, Arsenal will reason Juve, and the guy go feel come. At least on loan, even in assist most men just come to deputize for Thomas Partey or whoever will get injured in the middle of the pack. So, but Douglas Lewis, I never really know whether Arsenal don't get a hidden agreement with him. Say, don't worry, keep playing with for Aston Villa. At the end of the summer, we are going to take you for free. Well, that is January. Once January don't reach now, a lot of speculations and rumors and many many talks, transfer news will start to the show face. At the end of the day, I hope Arsenal sign one or two players. Our Sylvester Mikel or Mikel Sylvester, if you like, don't come and I analyze the way we Arsenal they play for away this season. The Arsenal are playing with freedom away from home. They don't win all their away games apart from that Manchester United own. They are playing like they are home. Like when they are away, they don't they play like say they be away team. You get this is one of the massive improvements for this Arsenal side compared to where they were coming from last season, and that is why they are top of the league today. If you check Man City, they draw some games. Check Every other club, they've drawn some games and lost some games. But Arsenal, apart from that Manchester United match, we've won everything. How I wish they would not lose that Manchester United match. It would be clear record. Like everybody would be totally for us. But unfortunately for us, it cost us counter-attacking football. We are doing a high line and went forward. So that one don't pass. So thanks for us, uh, making Sylvester. We praise our boys for doing the play. And everybody said they proud. Home are we? Our fans. Mwah. But that is the um, I know you have a fan, so God have a glimpse. The fans are they are with you. They are the para um, uh, But that was what we wish. At the same time, because Sylvester said, can we talk about Gabriel Mogalias? Can we talk say this guy, eh, in as much as he would praise him, say, he'd be a very good defender. But he needs to balance his level of aggression 
and calmness. When you watch William Saliba, William Saliba is also aggressive, but the fact is that you may not notice it because he is doing clean tackles. You need to know how to balance the calmness nature of him and the aggressive side of him so that you know, go really look at him like an aggressive uh, player. Look at the way Ganesha can turn in life around from being an aggressive player to come the balance in aggression and in calmness. Every one of us have a level of aggression within us. We also have another level of calmness within us. So this Gabriel Magali need to know how to balance the two. Don't be seen as a very aggressive defender. No, you don't know when to be aggressive, when to be calm, when to be cool-headed, not to panic. All those things you need to learn. All these things again. And Baba Kari just said this guy need more experience. Maybe he has to play more and more games to get so that he will learn on the job. Because in this life, we need to fail our way to success. So as Gabriel Magali is the play. In the time in the future, as time game they come quick and fast, so the guy will get more better. Well, I wish he becomes more better. I'm even for school self now. Come and say I can't talk about Manchester United. Can't talk say I see they see United. See, anybody write them out to say United can still finish in the second position the way in the see them. They can still finish there behind Man City, not behind us now. Behind us, like they will leapfrog Arsenal, they will go above Arsenal. See, they will come for that second position. I don't know, all this Manchester United uh, legend, they, they, they get one kind of mad bias. And they say they'll be general sports pundits. They are not Manchester United pundits. They are football pundits. Get me now, nah, only Manchester United they talk, I only ask now they talk about. So, if I talk some kind of things, you can notice my bias. Get so, But them, they are general sports. So, why do they talk, say, eh, my United don't rule them out? They can come and leapfrog Arsenal. So, Arsenal are going to lose all their games now. Only one are going to win. Out. Like, I don't. Their next match gone and Newcastle, that Newcastle match, I want to keenly watch that match because Manchester United versus so Newcastle is going to be a blockbuster, it's going to be a cracker and who will they play Leeds? You get Man City, they play Liverpool so we, by the grace of God, we will knock Leeds, blah blah if we win them, I'll come chill, buy my Zobo, Kuda, they watch other people, Man City, the way they go play because I expect a Liverpool to lose against a Man City even though secretly I'm praying for them to win so that we will still give Man City a small gap but you know we did very very easy but from the backdrop of the fact that Liverpool beat Rangers 7-1 you get so maybe they don't get from Salah scored the hat-trick so maybe he's back to his scoring ways so maybe they'll come perform against a Manchester United side then Newcastle, Newcastle I'm expecting them to do wonders against a Manchester United side Newcastle would go but I'm expecting them to do something Man, just to see how things go good so my dear football lovers Let's keep watching. On my own Hesky said, don't come outside again. Can you talk about how we will finish first, who will finish second? Can you talk how the table will be? So, Baba can you talk, say, the way the table will end at the end of 38 games, saying they see Manchester City finishing first, yes. Then people will do for second, they see Aston finishing second. That you can't rule away the fact that Aston have played very well this season. Unless you want to be biased. You can't, even in Liverpool, we'll be saying they are legend. You don't put them for first and second. You say Liverpool, they will struggle to enter the top four, but they can still make it because if Aston could make it last season, from the way they were playing lackluster like and at the end of the day, they finish fifth. Liverpool can still do it and finish fourth. But first and second, it's in Man City and it's in Liverpool. And seeing as so in team say everything will be well. I thank him for a lack of bias. You knock everything objectively the way it's supposed to be. So if you don't watch yesterday's show, check the top left corner of your screen. You will see the thumbnail. Click up so that you get all Arsenal updates as they drop all over the world. So it's a signing out. Enjoy the rest of your day. That game out.